Another force you will see in physics classes and in the real world is friction. So common definition for friction would be forces that oppose motion between sliding surfaces. So this is a force between things in contact with each other. We're going to look at two kinds. Uh, the first is sliding friction. Or it might be called kinetic friction. This is the force you get when the two objects are really moving, when one is really sliding against the other. So let's imagine we have a surface and we have a big block like this sitting on the surface and there it is and we push it. We apply a force to it like that. And we're pushing it such that it has a constant velocity like that. Okay? And let's not just imagine it, uh, let's do it. So here is my big block and we like these things to be, we got to get some real friction going so it's a fairly large block. And let's see, so what I say, <clears throat> we're going to push it so that it has a constant velocity, right? So I'm just going to push it with my hand, constant velocity like that. About as constant as I can make it. All right. So let's think about the forces in this case and see what does the friction force look like. So the way to do that, of course, is a free body diagram. We don't want to draw forces all over this diagram. It's got vectors for velocity and a surface. It's all confusing. We want to draw the block by itself, and it's nice to draw the forces just at the center. Right? So one force we know, because when you do a free body diagram, you've got to get all of them. Right? So one force, mg, force of gravity pulling it down. We know the table applies a normal force. And since it's not accelerating in the y direction, we know that those two must be equal and opposite. Right? Those two are canceling each other out. But we have push. We know we're pushing it to the right like that. That's the one my hand is applying. But I'm pushing it such that it has constant velocity. Right? So this is constant. Oops. V constant is a reminder. Therefore, let's draw its acceleration vector. Well, we can't because it doesn't have any. The acceleration is zero. Right? If the velocity is constant, dv dt, the, the rate of change of the velocity is zero. If the acceleration of the block is zero, there must be no force. So this friction force I was telling you about must push back. We know it opposes motion. But in this case, we also know that it's equal and opposite to uh, the pushing force. So let's see, f, we'll call it f uh, fricked for friction. So let's see, how do we get the value? Well, you might say, oh, it must equal the pushing force. Well, and actually, in this case, friction is set by something else, and I adjusted my pushing force to make the velocity constant. It's really, that's more the direction. This adjusts, I'm sorry, this adjusts, it matched that, not the other way around in this case. Because the way you get the friction force is that F fricked friction is mu k times the normal force. Oh, no. I wrote that the friction force vector is equal to the normal force vector. And of course, I'm really just telling you about the magnitudes here. The vectors can't be equal because the normal force and the friction force are in different directions. So I simply forgot to put on the magnitude bars. That's better. Where mu k, mu k, I have to be careful writing my mu's, is the coefficient of sliding friction. Or sometimes called kinetic friction. That's why it's a K. It's for things that are moving. So it's a coefficient. You can see it's unitless, right? Because this is a force and this is a force. Those are both in Newtons. So it's just a unitless number. And at a sort of an approximate level, the force of friction is just some fraction of the normal force. The number depends on how smooth things are, right? If it's like this thing sitting on ice, and it slides really easily, then mu k is really small. 
If mu k is really small, then the friction force is very small. If the friction force is very small, then I don't have to push very hard to accelerate it. Right? So really, there is a little bit of time that there's an acceleration. To push this at a constant velocity, I briefly have to overcome the friction force to get it going. Then it accelerates from zero velocity to some velocity. But then once I'm at that velocity I want, then I pull my force back. And at that point, I'm just balancing the friction force. So here I'm overcoming friction, and I sped it up, and now I'm going at my constant velocity, and I'm just matching friction. And it's hard to do it exactly perfect because this is really heavy. Right? Okay, and values of mu k, it actually depends. Uh, it depends, the, so if our low values can be 0 0.1, 0 0.01, really small. If you're on something smooth like ice, it can be very high up to one. It can be over one, in fact, for some cases. You know, geckos can crawl up a wall, right? It can be very high. A typical value, if you just have to guess a value, 0 0.5. Right? That's always a good guess. If it's really low or really big, guess 0 0.5. So that is pretty much what you would expect from friction, okay? But that's a case where we do have sliding surfaces. So that's why I did that case first. There's another way to look at it that is a little bit different, and that is static friction. Let's see, let's come back to our block here. <coughs> so, <coughs> block sitting here, mg is pulling it down, normal force is pushing it up. And I said, oh, I gotta, I gotta push and I gotta overcome the uh, friction force to get it started moving, right? Well, right now I'm pushing and I'm not overcoming the friction force. And it's not moving, we have no acceleration, the net force is zero. I can push a little harder and it's still not moving, okay? I can push a little softer and it doesn't move either. I can not push. Push really hard and it's still not moving. So there is another way to describe it, even when it's still. There must be a friction force when it's still, right? So let me draw it again. Here's the surface, here's the block, no velocity, no acceleration. We're pushing, push. That's the situation. Well, let's do the free body diagram. Always do a free body diagram. Here's the block. Here's the center. Mg is down. That's always true. Normal force is up. That's why it's not uh, falling. Uh, we're applying F push, but still the acceleration is zero, even though it's not moving. That means still there must be a friction force, even though it's not moving. When you push, the friction force pushes back. Okay, fine, but wait a minute. I pushed with different amounts of force and it's still pushed back. So this is a case, kind of like a normal force, where the friction force changes. It always pushes back just enough to cancel, or it always pull, you know, it, it opposes the push force just enough to where they always balance. If I push really soft, there's push force, push force, and, if I, and then there's the friction force. If I push really hard, there's the push force, there's the friction force. So it's like there's a variable amount. So let's say what it is then. The way you'd write it is the force of friction is um, less than or equal to mu s for mu static times the normal force. Okay, and where mu static is the uh, coefficient of static friction, mu s. Mu s is the coefficient of static friction. And like the kinetic case, it is unitless. Like the kinetic case, it's really low when you have something really slick like ice. It's really high when you have something like a cinder block um, on wood. And also like the kinetic, it's simply a coefficient that modifies the normal force and uh, to get the friction force. But what's different is it's not a constant force. It depends on how hard you push. And what this is telling you, this less than or equal to, means it can be zero or it can be a small value or a bigger value or a bigger value. But if I reach the value uh, if I push as hard as the value mu s times the normal force, which is usually uh, mu s times the normal force, then it can't go any higher, and that's when it starts moving, right? So here, push, 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 and there I reach mu s times the normal force, right? So that's the difference in the two situations, 
And one interesting aspect is for a lot of surfaces, you might ask, well, what are the numbers? Are they the same or what? So it turns out this number is usually bigger than this number. Sometimes it's twice as big. So what happens is you push, you push, you push, and as soon as you overcome the static friction, suddenly you have a large force, I mean large, you have a greater than zero force, and then to keep a constant velocity, you have to slow down, you have to pull back. Because as soon as you overcome friction, suddenly the friction force recedes, comes smaller, and you really accelerate. So often that's why you kind of over accelerate when you push something. You push, and as soon as you overcome it, you can almost feel it, that the friction resistance goes way down as soon as you push it. And that's why it takes you a second to, to get it at constant velocity. You'll be doing friction forces um, in a lot of other interesting cases. One thing to think about is on an incline. How does this change on an incline? It changes on an incline. I mean, it's, this is still correct. It's the normal force. Inclines are the reason we said it's mu times the normal force and not mu just times the weight or times gravity. Right? You could say, why don't we just put mg there? This is a case where mg equals the normal force. On an incline, that's not true. Right? On an incline, the normal force is smaller because it's at an angle, as we've looked at already. So the reason we use n is so that you can apply this formula in all kinds of different cases.